Hello, I'm Brett Knowles. This webinar walks you through how we score objectives and activities in a gamified balance scorecard, such as we use in My Objectives. So let's first talk about how it is we calculate what points are available to the team. If you think about it conceptually, the activities you do should earn points based on two things, the priority of the work that you're doing and the level of completion you achieve within the game. So, for example, if we have two objectives, let's say grow market share by 50% and another one, update the web landing page, these two objectives, although both important, are not of equal priority. So, for example, Perhaps the grow market share by 50% takes considerable more effort and is considerably more strategically important to the organization than updating the web landing page. So we need to make sure as you earn points, we recognize that. So within my objectives, we support five priority levels. An objective could be critical, essential, necessary, stretch, and even unplanned. And obviously those are gradations of priority inside each objective. Secondly, we talked about progress. What progress do you make level of completion during the game? Within my objectives, there are six progress levels. Success, you've met the objective within that game period. Bordering success, you're close to completion, but you haven't quite hit the mark. Partial success, you know, you're around 50% complete. Progress, you're making measurable progress. You've started it or you've planned but not started it yet. And you can see I've colored these green, amber, and red to designate the net score you would expect to achieve if at the end of the game you're at that level. So, for example, if at the end of the game you had only started that objective, obviously that would be a problem. If at the end of the game you had achieved success, whatever you define that to be, that's good. That's green. So, again, prior points are calculated based on both the priority and level of completion. So let's understand the relationship between these two things. We could actually set up a grid. And so, for example, we could set the priority on the left side of that grid. Again, the priority levels were critical, essential, expected, stretched, and unplanned. And across the top of the grid, the level of completion. And again, we have planned but not started, started, progress, partial success, and so forth. And then we could allocate points based on how you do in each cell. So, for example... Let's say you have an objective that is critical and you've achieved success. You'd earn 125 points in this example. Or let's say, for example, you have an objective that's essential and you hit the bordering success level at the end of the game, you'd earn 75 points. So this table calculates the points which are earned based on the progress that you've made and the priority of each objective. That sets you up with the point system. So now let's talk about the concept of normalization. And normalization accommodates the fact that different teams have different mix of objectives. So for example, let's say we have two teams and they've tallied what it is they need to do for the coming game. And based on the objectives and the priorities, let's say team one's score adds up to, say, a potential of 600 points, and team two's score adds up to, say, 789. These two teams now have set their objectives based on their scope of work and, and objectives, priorities, and so forth. But now it makes it hard for management to compare these two things. We have apples and oranges. So to solve that problem, we normalize them. What we're going to do is take each of those scores and net them up, normalize them to a thousand points. So both team one and team two are trying to achieve a thousand points. Now, in most cases, we set up the scorecard so the teams are roughly equivalent. But if that's not the case, this isn't a big issue. Let's say, for example, team one is twice as big and complicated and, and important as team two. 
they're still normalized up to a thousand points. But now when I take a look at team two's results, I look that at that in light of its relative size and priority compared to team one. But this way it makes it easier for everyone to understand and compare teams. So that's normalization. So now let's join these concepts together. How it is we actually report the first part is forecast performance. So let's take a look at that team one. Remember they had a thousand points potential at the beginning of the game. But as a game unfolds, things begin to happen. We have constrained resources, uh, people show up sick, I've got quality problems, whatever it might be. And over the course of the game, the team learns and, and understands that there's no possible way they could achieve a thousand. Well, it's important that the rest of the organization knows that because I might be dependent on that team to do their work so I can do my work or it may be necessary that I need their output. So what we should do is have the team update their forecast as the game unfolds, as they learn about constraints and problems in their way, update it. So in this example, they started off with their forecast of a thousand, but as the game unfolded week on week, they updated the forecast to the point of by the end of the game, week 12, they expect they could at best achieve 800 points. So this way I've communicated clearly to the organization what I'm going to say is the world of the possible, what it is we think we can achieve given the resources we've been assigned and the management skills, capacity, resources we have in light of the other constraining activities. Now let's take a look at how many points they've actually earned during this period. Again, our target is a thousand and as we progress, we're going to of course, start the project, eventually achieve some progress, get some partial success, and in this case, end the game at the level of bordering success. So what they've done is week on week communicated how we've been progressing against the original goal. So in this case, the original goal was a thousand and we didn't achieve it. We achieved bordering success, which turns out is 800 points. So. They've done their best, they've shown what they've done, and on an ongoing basis, leadership can see the progress they're making. Now, the important thing is, what if we combine these two charts? What if we could see our expected performance was declining across time, and our actual performance was rising to meet that? The interesting thing is here, as the game progresses, the team has kept everyone informed of what they expect to do and what they're actually doing. And in this case, I can clearly see I achieved the performance I expected as the game unfolded. So there are no surprises. Now, how do we report this in my objectives? Well, in this example, we have the forecast of 800 and the actual, in this case, also 800. So on my overall scorecard, I can see how my team is progressing. Now, if we've taken a snapshot back in here, we have a forecast of, say, 900. And at that point in time, the actual was 400 because we were at that stage of overall activity. So on an ongoing basis, you can see how you're progressing total points, but also see the graph and chart of how you look like you're progressing over time. So this is an overview of how it is we do objective scoring in my objectives.